Hey folks, Robbie Payne with Chrome Unbox coming at you today with a uh, full review of the Dell Chromebook 11. Now this device has an interesting history. Uh, it actually began as just an education uh, device. It was, it was geared completely towards schools. Then they said, okay, you know, it seems like a pretty good uh, device and there seems to be quite a bit of interest in it. Let's go ahead and make it public facing and allow the general consumer to get a hold of it. They did so. Uh, uh, demand was overwhelming, so they pulled it back off. And so the only way to get a hold of one, still technically through Dell, is to have a Dell representative get one for you. And so most of us, including myself, don't have one of those or don't know anybody that has one as well. So I uh, ended up buying it through somebody else, selling it on Amazon, that kind of thing. Um, and kind of went all in on this device after reading a lot of reviews, deciding, okay, um, for the time being, uh, probably for the next few months at least, uh, until a Broadwell uh, processor, processing Chromebook comes out, uh, I'm probably going to be sticking with Haswell. And so I'd like something that's a little more mobile than the HP 14. I just want something different. I've had the HP 14 for almost a year. So I sold it to a friend. Uh, he's rocking out uh, Linux and uh, he's got Steam and doing all kinds of cool stuff with it. So he's enjoying that. Uh, and I'm really enjoying this Dell. I really am. Uh, but before we uh, uh, move on, let's... Uh, Pull it out of there. This is my uh, work device. I'm doing all my work from this, um, at this point, so it is holding its own. It uh, around the sides here, we've got um, super speed ports. They're not blue, but they do have the SS, so they're 3.0 uh, combo jack here. Full size HDMI, nice large charging port, which I like. Uh, they feel more robust. I don't have to worry about them breaking. Uh, SD card slot. It fits pretty flush. Uh, here we go. You kind of see it sticks out just a little bit, just enough. Um, and so I don't know if that would bother most of you, but it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, nice uh, wide hinge back here. And then we have the fan vents, screws, and two large feet instead of uh, the little nubs. So an interesting take. Really industrial looking design going on here. So you kind of have this these sharp uh, corners kind of coming around here and instead of the rounded stuff. So you kind of have a break there. And, those speakers are in that kind of tilted up section there. So that it does project pretty well. Again, they're mediocre. Um, I haven't seen a Chromebook other than the Pixel and the HP 11 that have speakers that are any worth any note whatsoever. However, this device does have a very nice um, higher end. I don't, I don't want to use the word premium. Uh, premium to me is Chromebook Pixel. It's MacBook Air, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, it's not quite there, but it's very solid. No creaking. It feels good. It is a little on the thick side and on the heavy side. But it's not something that, you know, you couldn't grab and take with you, throw it in a backpack. It's definitely that size of device. And so uh, for me, most times I'm plugged into a 24-inch 1080p monitor and I don't use it. But every once in a while, I want to open this thing up, have it as a secondary monitor. And sometimes I'd like to take it home and be able to do some computing from the couch and maybe work uh, not at a desk every once in a while, not very often. And so that's why I kind of thought, well, the 11-inch form factor gives me a little bit more versatility. Plus, I've read glowing reviews of this device and a lot of people saying of all Chromebooks, it's it's the best one out there right now. So I really wanted to give it a try. And like I said, kind of went all in because I didn't buy it straight from Amazon. So a return is not going to be easy. Uh, it's actually going to be difficult. So um, the question then becomes, well, what do I think about it? Because internally, it's not doing anything different. So we have the HP 14 with 4 gigs of RAM. We've got the Acer C 720 that has 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, this is not doing anything different. It's a Haswell class Celeron processor, four gigs of RAM, blah, 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 2995U. You've heard it a thousand times. And so we're, we're in that, it's that same hardware malaise that we've been in for a while. We kind of had this, this whole slew of Celeron processor Chromebooks come out. Now we're kind of in that Batrail mode, which I'm not a fan of at all, uh, with a little bit of Tegra K1 uh, sprinkled in there for good measure. And that's it. That's kind of what we got to choose from. And so for me right now, the Haswell is still the top dog. Uh, when we're talking about normal consumer class uh, Chromebooks, the uh, obviously with the uh, Pixel excluded from that. And so day-to-day uh, -day operation, I'm not going to go through showing you what it does. Go look at the HP 14 review. Go look at the C720 review. That It's the same thing. Chromeboxes, they all run the same internal hardware. So it's going to do all the same things all the same ways. So what sets this thing apart? What makes this thing different? What makes it better or worse, uh, in my opinion? I will start off with the screen. I like the fact that it's not matte. It's not an anti-glare screen. You can see reflection in it. Um, some people think that's good. Some people think that's bad. I tend to think it's good. I think the screen looks clearer through clear plastic. Um, I also don't like the, the, the grit that anti-glare puts on. 
on the screen. I think it takes a low resolution and makes it look even more crummy. Um, and so that is not the case with this device. I don't care for the huge bezels. I think they almost could have put a 12 inch monitor in this, a 12 inch display in this, uh, and easily gotten away with it. No problem. I mean, these bezels are huge. And so that seems a little bit wasteful, uh, makes it look a little cheap. So I'm not a huge fan of that, but I've done a few days of work with this in my lap. No problem. Again, it's no better or worse necessarily than any other Chromebook on the market. The colors are washed out. The viewing angles are terrible. It's a TN panel. Um, there's just nothing to say for them. They're terrible, terrible plays. And so um, I'm not a fan of the fact that it's glossy around here, but it's not glossy plastic, like uh, an extra piece here. It's actually one solid piece all the way across, almost as if it were going to have a touch screen. It does not. Uh, the keyboard is fantastic typing on this thing and just, you know, holding it, it's, it's solid. Uh, when you hold it from the corner, it doesn't creak and bend and twist and all that kind of stuff. And typing on the keyboard, the keys travel well, they're quiet. Uh, they feel great. Dell did a great job there. Again, you have, even in a small form factor, a nice large trackpad, all five fingers fit across it. It's about as big as, let me pull this one over here, the much larger 13 inch, um, Acer uh, Chromebook 13. It's actually almost the exact same size trackpad. Uh, so. And so they, they crammed a, a large trackpad in here, which is, which is really awesome. Um, actually, let me back up. Let me bring this over. So you have basically the same size trackpad that's in the Acer Chromebook 13. So uh, they did a good job in cramming a large trackpad into a small device. And so those two things coupled together, when we talk about input, uh, it's as good of an experience as I've had on a Chromebook. It really is an enjoyable experience to type. As you can kind of see, the keys are nice and well-spaced. They didn't waste a lot of room on the sides. Um, you have a decent decent size over here. And this inside here is like a rubberized kind of plastic. Uh, so it feels really good on the hands. The trackpad is, is slightly textured, but moves really well. It's very responsive and has a nice quiet click. Um, and so the whole thing, input-wise, feels great. Again, I'm not a fan of the screen. Um, and there aren't, haven't been too many Chromebooks where I am a fan of the screen. So I'm not really surprised by that. Um, and I did, before I got this, I, well, I think when I did the unboxing, I mentioned this, I really thought there was a chance I was going to be able to turn this, open the screen up and actually replace it with the HP 11 IPS panel. I've since found out they use a different pin format. Uh, and there is a thing that could possibly convert it, but I have no clue how that would fit in there. And I'm not really a fan of opening this stuff up and, maybe breaking something and not going back together and blah, 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 all that stuff. I'd like to be able to sell it because I really feel like when Bay Trail processors come out, uh, I'm going to go with a Chromebook that has an IPS display and a Bay Trail, or not Bay Trail, Broadwell processor uh, in it. And so that's kind of my hope that somewhere early in the year, we're going to see something like that. For right now, I've got, uh, you know, I've got Ubuntu with GNOME running on it uh, in here just fine. I don't know why I say that. Oh, I think my battery might have just died. Perhaps. I'm not sure what I just did. I likely have upset it because I had it plugged into an external monitor while Linux was open. Um, so I've done this a couple times where I've yanked the HDMI cable out uh, before taking the time to shut down Linux in the background. You're asking Chromebook to do quite a bit there. But um, I do have. Uh, um, Linux uh, with Ubuntu 14.04 running in the background um, and it does so flawlessly, no problems. I mean, obviously if I do something silly like what I just did, we run into issues, but I will show you that up and running real quick. I'm gonna bring this back up here. So that for those of you who have not taken the dive and done this yet, uh, you only have to do all this kind of command stuff upon restart. So we're going to have to start the Ubuntu environment up. But 14.04 runs just fine. I have not had any issues with it. And GNOME is actually a pretty nice little operating system. So I've actually got you know, Google Chrome running over here as well. Uh, and it's nice and quick. And it does just fine. And so we can switch environments just like that. So it's nice and quick. Again, I, I'm, we're not going to sit and uh, get stuck on... Um, how things run, but we see things moving back and forth really quickly. And Chrome always wants me to put stuff in. There we go, I'll be happy. Let me 
that we can bounce back and forth between environments nice and quick, which is pretty awesome. Um, and so overall, the, the experience of this thing, I, I have to agree with most of the reviewers, is very nice. They've done a good job of making a very solid feeling Chromebook. Uh, it's, it's impressive in most ways and, and in all the ways that you would expect it to be with the same internals as the HP 14, HP 720. It's, it's as good as performance is going to get right now. That being said, um, I still am waiting uh, for the Chromebook that's really going to make me feel like I'm not sacrificing something. Um, and I was so excited when I saw the Toshiba Chromebook 2 coming with an IPS panel, and uh, and then I saw it was going to be Bay Trail. <laughs> um, eventually, I think we're going to get one that, that ticks all the boxes, hopefully. Um, fantastic display, uh, something in that 12 to 13 inch range, great keyboard, trackpad, a little bit more memory, maybe a 32 gig hard drive, at least 4 gigs of RAM, um, and all the connectivity that we're looking for. Hopefully we'll see that in a package soon. Um, I can't imagine they can't pull that together for around 400 bucks. I just, it, it, I can't imagine that's not possible, maybe 450. And so I think there is a lot of people that would gladly pay, especially as Chrome is starting to be able to run Android apps and we're starting to see more and more functionality day in, day out from Chrome OS. Uh, it, it is becoming a legitimate uh, alternative to other operating systems. People are making the switch. I've got lots of people in my family that are doing it. But granted, I'm a huge Chromebook trumpeter, but um, people in my office, are, you know, I'm, I'm lending them Chromebooks and letting them try them. And, and they're more and more impressed each and every time Chrome gets better and better and better and faster over time. And it's just so unlike most operating systems. And so while Adele is a great computer, and I would dare say um, I like it better than HP because... That's 1366 by 768 resolution over 14 inches on the HP 14. It was always worrisome to me. And the screen was terrible. Um, the screen's a little better. Uh, and at least when we crunch the pixels down a little bit, it looks a little sharper. But uh, overall, the performance is the same. And I like the HP 14's keyboard trackpad. I like these better. Um, this is probably one of the best input experiences I've ever had. Uh, feels really good uh, typing on it. And obviously it runs really well um, with, the, with this processor. But hopefully in the next few months, we're gonna start finally seeing the next generation of Chromebooks really. I think Bay Trail was kind of, I don't know, stop gap, kind of a filler kind of thing. And then I think Bay Trail has a place. Those processors I think can, can fill that $200, $250 thing of, hey, I need something on the, on the couch around the house. But for those people that really wanna start using Chrome OS to do a lot more stuff, uh, myself included, I think there is a market um, uh, for one that, that doesn't sacrifice anything really that's in that four to $500 range that again, you could spend four to $500 probably on a comparable PC, but now we're finally starting to get to the place where we can start having the conversation about, I choose Chrome OS because I like the way it operates, not because I can get a cheap uh, device. And so hopefully um, we're, we're gonna see some of those things start to take fruit or start to take hold and some of that fruit come. Uh, in the next six months, especially with uh, uh, Broadwell processors coming down uh, soon. And so if you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comments. As I've said in the last couple of videos, um, I apologize if I haven't gotten back to some of you all in a timely manner. Uh, I've just been incredibly busy with work. You even hear notifications going off right now. Um, I, I've just been really, really swamped with work. So even just getting these videos done is, is pushing it for me. And so I will try to get back to your questions and comments. Uh, I enjoy the fact that people comment back and forth to each other down beneath them. A lot of a lot of you guys are just as knowledgeable as I am about this stuff. And so you can answer some of those questions and it's awesome. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I uh, appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. The more subscriptions, hopefully the more Chromebooks. I'll start seeing some Chromebooks without having to pay for them. Um, that will just help me do more reviews and help me get more stuff to you guys more often. So I uh, appreciate you all for watching. And until next time, have a good one.